This is a transient voltage depressing diode, or TVS diode for short. Cumulatively, these things are responsible for saving billions of dollars in electronic equipment, ESD events, and other power surges every year. We're going to be going over the basics of the TVS diode and how you can get started with using them in your electronic circuits today. But before we go any further, please go ahead and drop a like on the video for me. It helps my channel out a ton and subscribe so you can stay up to date with any future videos. A lot of the information in this video comes from these application notes, which will be linked in the description below if you want to follow along and do some further reading. So the first question I want to answer is, what are TVS diodes and how do they work? Now in its most simple form, a TVS diode is just a Zener diode that has been optimized to handle the high peak energy of a transient event. But there are a lot more details we need to discuss in order for you to get a full understanding of how they work. There are several different types of TVS diode with their own unique characteristics that make them better suited for certain applications. You will often see multiple TVS diodes working together in a configuration to enhance their positive attributes while also minimizing their weaknesses. Before we get into specific examples of TVS diodes, I want to go over some important parameters that describe the performance and behavioral characteristics of a TVS diode. These parameters help us choose which TVS diode is best for our application. The first parameter I want to talk about is going to be the reverse standoff voltage. This is the voltage below which our TVS diode will not interfere with the line that is connected to at all. Usually you want your reverse standoff voltage to be a little higher than your signal voltage to ensure that it does not interfere with the signal. The next parameter is breakdown voltage. This is the voltage beyond which the TVS diode will start to significantly conduct. This is when the TVS diode becomes essentially fully active and will greatly affect whatever line it's connected to. The third parameter is going to be the clamping voltage. In the event of a large ESD spike, this is the voltage that the TVS diode will ensure the line does not exceed. It is critical that this level is below the failure threshold of whatever components are connected to this line. And lastly, this isn't really a primary parameter, but it's more like a parasitic element to the TVS diode, because as we've learned in real life, all components have parasitic elements to them. And so this one we're going to talk about is going to be the capacitance. So uh, basically, if your TVS diode is on a line, you have to understand how its capacitance can affect a something like maybe an I squared C signal or a spy line or any sort of signal that is being transmitted on the line. Now that we have a good understanding of the parameters that describe the behavior of a TVS diode, we can now talk about the different types of TVS diodes and how their characteristics make them better suited for certain applications. The first major type of TVS diode I want to go over is known as the avalanche diode. The avalanche diode is one of the simplest TVS diodes to work with because they only require two connections. Usually one is to the protected line and then one is to ground. Avalanche diodes are great at absorbing large ESD voltage spikes and power line surges, so you'll often see them being used on power supplies and other low speed slash non-signal lines. They also typically have higher parasitic capacitances, which makes them poor choices for any sort of high speed data line. Avalanche diodes come in both unidirectional and bidirectional orientations so they can be used in applications where a high negative clamping voltage is also necessary. The next major type of TVS diode that I want to go over is the diode array. Like it sounds, a diode array is a group of usually four or more diodes that all work together to protect a line from an ESD event. Diode arrays typically have a moderate power rating and low capacitance, which makes them ideal for low voltage, high speed uh, data transmission lines. Having a lower capacitance means they will not affect the rising and falling edges of the signals as much, so data signal is not at risk of being corrupted. The diode array can also be configured to have a very low clamping and breakdown voltage, so it is very well suited for protecting lower voltage ICs such as microcontrollers. Furthermore, Diode arrays can also be configured to offer very good power surge absor absorption capabilities if you use them in a certain configuration. One downside to the diode array is they are much more complicated than the avalanche diodes and often require four plus connections to operate. And it may be difficult to find alternative parts in the event of a supply chain shortage. All in all, the diode arrays offer more customizability at the cost of simplicity. Now that we have given an Overview of the TVS diode family, let's take a look at some specific examples where different TVS diodes could be used. So just some general like knowledge about how TVS diodes are often used. You'll usually see them placed around connectors that run off board since that is the most likely cause of an ESD event. 
So in our first example, we see a signal coming from an off-board connector that connects to the input of an operational amplifier. Now for clarity, this is an analog signal that is coming from the output of a potentiometer. So we know it is not a high-speed data line like an I2C signal or some type of um, other wired communication. Additionally, the signal has a maximum value of 5 volts and the operational amplifier has a maximum input voltage of 12 volts. So in this scenario, an avalanche diode would be the best choice. Uh, one with a clamping voltage uh, that is less than 12 volts and a reverse standoff voltage that is greater than 5 volts would, do, uh, would work perfectly in this scenario um, to, to protect the IC, for, to protect the operational amplifier, and also not affect any of the signal coming from the potentiometer, um, which would be you know around five volts at maximum. So that's a good example of an application of a TBS diode. So and then continuing on, our next example, um, we'll look at an RS-485 signal that goes off board to another electronic circuit. The communication speed is around 400 kilohertz with a logical high level of around 3.3 volts. The electronic circuit that these data lines are connected to has a maximum voltage tolerance of 3.6 volts. So that's the highest voltage it can be without damaging the electronics connected to this line. In this scenario, a standard diode array would be a great choice because they have low parasitic capacitances, which means that they won't affect the rise time slash fall times of the 400 kilohertz signal too much and you'd be able to set a very low clamping voltage to protect the sensitive electronics on this line. So with that, that pretty much wraps up everything I wanted to discuss about TBS diode configurations. Please leave a comment below if you have any questions for me. I respond to every single comment I get. Uh, thank you so much if you have made it to the end of this video, and hopefully I will see you in the next one.